Andrew, did you want to play a piece before we start? No, go ahead. Just okay. okay. Hillary, how do we get them on the big screen? No, I'm going to do a little PowerPoint presentation about the grant. And then, Anne, I'm going to turn it over to them and they'll be on the big screen. Thank you. Okay, because we haven't quite started yet. So we're going to start right now. Okay. All right. Thank you, Anne. Joe okay. just lost your video. I don't know why. Yeah, no, one second. Okay. All, All right. right. Can on. you see it? Yep. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our online session. And tonight you're at the Jenks Center <laughs> virtually. Oh, you're right there. Oh, that's cool. And I'd just like to discuss briefly our mission to expand offerings at the Jenks Center <laughs> through evening and weekend programming to bring entertaining, interesting presentations to working seniors, and that's defined at the center as 50 and up, to invite and grow an intergenerational audience, to inspire um, with dynamic and compelling programming, like tonight's program, to pique new interests and pursuits, to transport exciting new adventures and hobbies into people's lives. So i just like to go over what we have for offerings in December. We did have um, legacy planning, so that was in the beginning of the month. We had an opera from Tufts University, and that was on WinCam, which you can also go through the Jenks Center to get to that. We had an introduction to Feng Shui last night uh, with Mei Hong. Tonight, of course, is a Composer's Corner with our guest, Joe Blanchard. Uh, this weekend, we have setting a holiday table like a stylist. And then we have how to solve the Rubik's Cube, which uh, Andrew will also be doing. Uh, we have Plymouth Plantation coming and celebrating their 400th anniversary of the Mayflower's arrival. And you can still um, register for that. But the Rubik's Cube setting a holiday table, they are both full. And then we have the Gua Sha demonstration, which is a type of massage. And that is also full at this time. So in January, you might wanna keep these in mind because as I said, they do fill up very quickly. We have creative journaling and that's on the 6th of January. We have dumplings three ways, again with Mei Hong, she was wonderful. Um, and that's on the 7th. We have The Art of Cozy with Stacy Martin, who's our interior designer. Um, she's the one who's gonna be doing the setting the table, which is full in December. We have Acrylic Painting Basics with Eli Portman. Um, and if you have been with him, he's wonderful. So he's coming back for um, two seminars. You sign up for just the one and you'll be in both. Um, we have a new teacher coming to do an Ayurveda 101, which is in the yogic tradition. And then again, we'll have the Composer's Corner. And our guest um, next month will be Joe Mulholland. And then we have a visit from Henry David Thoreau. So um, the Thoreau Society is going to lend us their actor for that. And that's on the 18th. We have Leona and Friends on the 27th. This is a musical um, group. Leona, who's a pianist, will be um, working with her friends from the, um, the New England Conservatory in Boston. And then we have the vertical foam roller demonstration. So this is a type of massage with John Saya, who is the person who's doing our gua sha this month. And then we have, of course, tonight, The Composer's Corner with Joseph Blanchard. Joe is a self-taught pianist and composer, inspired by the melodies and harmonies of the romantic 19th century classical composers. Joe composes organically, unaware of the formal nomenclature of notes, keys, chords, and theory. Yet his music is every bit as compelling and often magical. He routinely performs in local venues, including the BSO Cafe in Symphony Hall. And I know that he also played, it's not on here, but he also played um, for Leahy Clinic. And uh, I did reach out to them. So there may be some people here tonight who have seen him 
performed there, and Joe has published uh, four CDs. So our host tonight is Andrew Salentano, as many of you know, my amazing husband. He studied violin and performed at Carnegie Hall with the MIT Symphony Orchestra. He self-taught in piano and started classical lessons about 15 years ago. Andrew plays occasionally at the BSO Cafe at Symphony Hall and composes his own material and you can find it at the thoreaucd.com. He was recently commissioned by the Azerbaijan Embassy to compose a piece commemorating the 650th anniversary, anniversary sorry, of the Prophet Nassimi. So I wanna thank you for coming this evening and please share you know, all the events that you've been um, enjoying at the Jenks Center, tell your friends. Um, and we look forward to um, invitations in your email. Tell us what else you'd like to see and visit us often if you would like to donate, we would appreciate that. And in closing, um, this evening it was made possible and is possible by a generous grant from the Cummings Foundation. So I'm gonna turn this over to Andrew. And now hopefully everyone can see you on the split screen. That is the hope. So that is the hope. <laughs> that is so our much. hope. Thank you so much. First of all, a special thank you to the Jenks Center for putting this together and to the Cummings Foundation for funding this. We very much appreciate that. Um, of course, to my lovely wife for agreeing to let me do this. It's very exciting for me to do this. Um, I would, before we get started, I just want to say, please stey on mute until the end when we'll have question and answers. If you'd like to ask some questions during the event, you can use the chat box on the bottom. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's a little thing called chat. Just type in a, a question, and, and if I can see it during this thing, I'm glad to ask it, you know, if it's appropriate to ask in the middle of it. But we'd love to wait till the end, and we don't have a hard stop at 7.30, so, so no worries. If you think it's getting uh, close to the end, we're not going to shut you down. But uh, but most importantly, I want to thank um, Joe tonight for agreeing to do this because he's a very busy guy. So even though he's a very talented musician, he literally sometimes works till 11 o'clock at night. And I'll, I'll actually say, I'll call you tonight when I'm getting home from work. <laughs> so the guy is amazing. And um, I'm very privileged to have you on the show tonight, Joe, for a number of reasons. I met Joe, I think maybe about three or four years ago, Joe. Do you know how long ago it was? I feel it was four, yeah. Four years ago, a beautiful yeah. friend of ours introduced him. I, I run a, uh, a thing at the BSO uh, Cafe uh, in, in Symphony Hall. Of course, we hope that it comes back again. It's been closed down during COVID, but, but and, and a good friend of, a good mutual friend of ours, Jackie, uh, and I hope Jackie's out there tonight. I know she was not feeling well, but Jackie introduced me and said, you've got to check this guy out. And they had him uh. in, and the music he plays is so beautiful. People just absolutely love it. And I felt, it, I found it, there are times I listen to his music and literally get goosebumps. I'm just, it's just incredible to listen to. And it, even more striking, and it's not even that, it's not even that important because even if he did know music theory and chords and all of that, uh, great, but he's still a great musician. But the fact that he doesn't know that even makes it more interesting. And I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Joe, I don't think you want to know that. I mean, at this point, you, you do it so well. There's no reason for you to ever find out, you know, that you're keep playing the key of C sharp or what the chord progression is. And uh, I don't know how you feel, but I, I don't want to get in the way of your creativity and start to put a structure on top of what you're doing because it works, you know. I think I would find that a bit confusing. So I've, I've, I've stayed away from that all these years. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been happy. It's mostly about um, finding pleasure in playing music. That's what it's about for me. You know, I we, we talked a little bit, and uh, what's great about tonight is this, we're going to explore some things that we haven't talked about, and just the idea of doing this. And one thing I wanted to ask you, Joe, is uh, I had an event because I do some composition myself too, as you know, where you know I have a little, I have one CD, you have four, but I had a woman come up to me one time, and she said, "You know, your music meant so much to me because I was in a hurricane. Now, if it wasn't around here, like she was from Alabama or something, or wherever hurricanes happen." And she said. And I, we, our family was freaking out. And I took your CD, I put it in the in the CD player, and it just calmed us right down. Of course, it didn't stop the hurricane, but it was just great to hear that. So I'm sure you've had people tell you stories about how your music has affected them. And if you, I don't want to put you in the spot because I've never asked you this before. But do you are there any that you feel like sharing? And if not, that's fine too. But I'm just wondering what people say to you. Well, thanks. We we all have. Um anecdotal uh, experiences, right? Where, where we can say, well, somebody said this and somebody said that. 
Uh, one lady that comes to mind um, worked at Tower Hill Botanical Gardens where I played for five years every Sunday. And um, she was running the front desk. So she liked my music and I gave her all my CDs. So she has all my CDs. And she takes a trip down to Florida every year, she told me, and stays for a month with family. And uh, mm -hmm. she, she takes my CDs with her and she says that she just plays them almost continuously so that she can just calm down and, and helps her get to Florida. Now I know that that takes forever to drive <laughs> down there. So I'm sure she meant that she just played my CDs for a few hours and then uh, the next day would play it again. I'm sure it took her two or three days to get down there. But anyway, there's a good example of somebody uh, saying how they appreciated my uh, CDs, you know? Yeah. You know, I thought maybe as a good start, I would play because I have the CD running here. And by the way, one of the challenges with COVID is the only time I got to listen to your music was I don't have a CD player at home. I have a little DVD burner I'm using right now. But I would listen to you every day in my car driving to work, commuting to work. And now I don't do that. So I'm, I'm kind of getting I, at the Jones is over, you know, I'm not listening to your music. But anyway, this first piece and let me do this. I need to share the screen to make this happen. This first piece you call Reflecting Pool. Do you want to give us a little uh, advice about it before I move on and share the screen? Sure. Um, Reflecting Pool, as you know, is the first song in, in my Life Cycle CD, which was my first CD. Mm -hmm. I might as well just say my first CD was recorded in 2002. And I had a whole bunch of songs in my head. And I said, geez, I'd love to record them. And, um, and I had played at BU a few times, uh, Boston University, the concert hall. Uh, I had a friend that was over there, and he said, hey, come over and play this piano. And so I did uh, on the uh, concert hall uh, piano, which was a nine-foot Steinway D. Mm. And uh, then I found out you could record by paying money and make an appointment, and they have an actual recording engineer. And so I did that, and I spent a couple of hours playing, and I played a whole bunch of tracks. Uh, most of which uh, had lots of errors and problems because I'd never even done it before. I was, I was pretty nervous. But, you know, when I listened to them later and I found out of the 42 tracks that I, that I recorded, wow. I ended up with 13 that I thought were pretty good that didn't have mistakes and whatever. So I liked them. The best one out of the 13 was this reflecting pool that you're mm -hmm. about to play. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was nice. It was calm. I'd never played it really before. I'd fooled around with, with some of the, the riff of it, but I'd never actually played it. Well, the piano was so good, and this is what I tell people. Uh, when you get a really good Steinway D that's perfectly tuned, it was tuned right before I played it by a, an unbelievable tuner. Mm. And um, that song just played itself for me, okay? I didn't even have to think about it, uh, you know? And that's how it happens when you get a really good piano and a, a good tuning. So I connected with that song uh, even after I was listening to them back again. And I said, you know, I want this to introduce my life cycle CD. Hmm. So go ahead if you want to. And what I love about this, too, is if you listen, folks, you'll hear the riff that he builds or the motif is it basically kind of wraps around itself. So it has a reflective quality to it, which is just perfect. So let me you know. I haven't done much of this sharing screen stuff yet. So let me see how this works. I believe I can just go like this. And as long as I bring in... Uh -huh. Uh, let's see. I need to bring in the. Uh, here we go. Uh, no, nope, that didn't quite work. I'm, I'm going to have to share the screen. I'm going to have to show you my player, I guess. Okay. So this is the player, and this will. This is how it'll work. Here we go. Thank you. 
absolutely love that. Joe, that is just so nice. Well, thank you, Andrew. Stop sharing for a minute. You know, um, when we practiced this a few days ago, I, I also shared a few things with Joe that he liked, so I thought I'd share something with the audience tonight, too, that there are some things I've played the same way, I've discovered the same way as you, where almost, your, your hand almost figures it out for you. And in fact, there are some cases where I didn't even know the notes I was playing. It would just kind of fall under my hands. But I have to tell you, honestly, that doesn't happen too often to me, and yet you do it so well. But this is one song I did. I'll just play a little excerpt of it. Um, and um, I actually wrote some some words to it, too. And I don't know if Doug Hammer's on the line tonight, but he helped me, actually. He played this for me at a cabaret show and had people sing it. And, uh, you know, sometime we can probably, after the fact, send people the link to that. But I basically took a very simple left-hand riff, and, uh, and just a melody fell kind of on top of it. It just went like this. So that is something that just kind of came to me. And, I, you know, until Doug and I sat down, I didn't even know what chords I was using in that second. He helped me figure it out because I was just doing it. So, But you do that all the time, and I just love the fact that you have so many melodies. You talked about 40 of them. I probably listened to at least all the ones you have CDs over the last week, and just I'm in love with every one of them. But, of course, we don't have time to go through them all. And, by the way, you can go to, uh, I think it's, JoeBlanchardMusic.com, is that it? You go to your site? It's, Joe Blanchard. it's just JoeBlanchard.com. JoeBlanchard.com, and you can order his CDs. They're just really beautiful. Um, the next one I thought I'd do, Joe, is just a very simple, you have a couple of miniatures on your Life Cycle album, and I love them because they really are very different. And this is one that's called Simple Summer, and I think it's not quite the next one, so let me, I just need to pop ahead and bear with me for a second. be track three. Track three, okay, very good. Thank you, sir. songs like that in the world i just <laughs> especially in this time um one of the things that we talked about the other night i hope you share it with the audience is you know how you come about with the titles because that's absolutely the perfect title for that simple summer it's just you got a live little piece it's just full of whimsy and and fun and you know if you were a, a professional classical composer we call this probably a prelude in fact one of my ambitions is to help you take all the stuff that you don't read or write music and find ways to help you get it transcribed because I think there should be, you know, there should be a whole book for the life cycle and, and the um, and the morning light one and your other CD. There should be books that people can buy to play because I think these things are so accessible and so much fun. Any any comments about, can you share with us how you come about your titles? Because I think it's a great story. Well, that is a pretty good story. Um, we have 13 children in my my family, not my own family, which has three, but where I come from, there are 13 
the children and the family. So it doesn't. And um, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and, and almost all of them really like music or are musical or sing or play an instrument or something. My father and mother both were very musical, so there is an element there. Anyway, whenever I would get my songs um, uh, recorded so that I can play them for, or go and play them on my digital piano up at my parents' house in Maine. Uh, there's four or five that live right nearby. And they would always come over. Some others might be visiting. We'd always have at least five and as many as uh, 10 or 11 in the living room. And, uh, and I would ask them to uh, bear with me and s sit for an hour so I can play a few songs. We, we must name these pieces, right? So. And uh, it turns out there's a few of my siblings that are really talented uh, at, at throwing out names. Um, so what we would do is I would play a piece and I'd stop and I'd have a piece of paper and I'd write down, people would throw out random names and I would write them down. And then when we got about 20 names for the songs, then I'd play the song again and then stop reading off the names that were thrown out. And then people would vote quickly like, if one person liked a name, but seven didn't, we just would throw that name right out. And so, so after a while, it would get down to, you had three and four voting for a name. And, and finally, when I get to maybe out of seven people, if I got to four or five people said the same song name was appropriate, mm -hmm. that's how I would take a name. And so it really goes through that filtering process. And, and that's why the names are pretty good because I always said, when you get five people agreeing on a name for a song, it's a pretty good name. Well, by the way, I just had a comment come from someone saying that Simple Summer has phrases that suggest yodeling, which is kind of an interesting <laughs> thing. So, I love <laughs> this next piece I love, too. It's a little miniature. It's, it's called uh, Meadow Waltz. Did you want to make any comments about it before I play it? Well, Meadow Waltz is something that I've been playing maybe for quite a long time in the sense that it's just a very slow little melody it's very it is simple i decided not to call it simple because we already have simple summer right. uh, but um metal waltz is reminiscent of when i was a kid i actually had some influence on the name of this piece myself um because i loved uh meandering in meadows down in connecticut uh when we were growing up uh there were fabulous meadows down there and um I remember just sort of lolling, lolling around in a meadow. And when I came up with this piece later, when I was in my 20s, um, I remember, boy, it really made me think of those meadow days when I was uh, milling around in meadows. <laughs> so meadow waltz kind of uh, uh, kind of came to me pretty quickly. So that, and everybody agreed it was a good name. So I used it. Well, here goes, meadow, meadow waltz. <laughs> You know, there's so many pieces here uh, that we could spend hours tonight, but we don't have that much time. But the next one I want to do, and I want to do it because, I mean, it goes longer, so we'll probably cut it off a bit. But what I love about some of your writing is that it, you, you have a way of expressing melodically the imagery. And so this is called Waterfall, and aptly so. 
And I just love the way it sounds and works. It's very soothing. It's so waterfall-like that it can't be more than that. It's just you know, sometimes you listen to a famous composer and they say, this is so-and-so, and you listen to it on, I don't hear that. But this is a case where I clearly hear the waterfall. So I'm going to play waterfall now. And I'll probably cut it off you know, when it starts to repeat. Um, and then um, and then we can make some comments about it. So here goes. Okay. It's, not, it's not the next piece. I need to skip a few, so bear with me for a minute here. It's like number six. I love that you know all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to skip thoughts over coffee, which I love, but we're going to skip it because we have so many to do. This is Waterfall. <laughs> to even stop it but we have so much more to listen to but just really beautiful um now which came first were you thinking waterfall or you just kind of did it and then your, your your sibling said waterfall how did that work all right let me let me say uh i think it was my sister janet uh who's really good at naming songs uh she lives up in maine in portland by the way and uh she plays piano she has a, a cd also um and she loves to be involved in music of any kind. She loves to sit around and think of what my songs remind her of. And she started saying, boy, that sounds, I feel like it's water, uh, this water. Mm. And somebody else said, you know, what, waterfall? And, and everybody goes, yeah, that's a good idea. So it, it came quickly uh, and we just kept it. And, and it seems like it's an appropriate name. I, I like the name waterfall for it, yeah. I do Just, love, you know, I get inspired sometimes by sounds. So, for example, on the Thoreau CD album, I had Wander in Dreamland. And there's a section where I was inspired by the squirrels scrambling up a tree. When you see two squirrels chasing each other up a tree, it's an amazing uh, thing. So <laughs> I, I came up with this little melody, and it's a little crazy. And to me, it's just squirrels. <laughs> very crazy <laughs> <laughs> you know that's exactly what it sounds like a couple of squirrels <laughs> fighting up going up a tree squirrels not chipmunks or yeah but anyway. and then yeah uh, for the nasimi project i actually there's a part in the where they have the, in the poem he talks about flames flames and i was thinking how can i how can i invoke the concept of flames and i was thinking of flames have an overlapping or overlapping element to them that's out of sync deliberately so i came up with this thing which was um let's see if i can do it now um so the left hand's going and the right hand's going so they're deliberately out of out of uh, sync with each other so you get that kind of a flame effect um but uh, the next thing i'm going to do is change gears a little bit because 
you are such a mild mannered guy. You're kind of like Clark Kent in many ways. You know, you're just so. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen you in the years I've known you ever get agitated or frustrated at all. I'm sure in your personal life you may have had some things, but you have one song that clearly is a frustrating piece. <laughs> and I want to ask you, do the you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Now I do. Did you have an experience in traffic that did this, or was this something? It was again your sibling said this sounds just like a, a traffic incident. <laughs> All right, that one I named because that was an early on song. It was very early, way before yeah. I made the CD. Oh. I made the CD in 2002. I had that song pretty much since like 95. And uh, people were saying, hey, what do you call that song? So I had a name for it myself before we ever got together and named my songs. Oh, okay. and, um, and, and I'll tell you how it came about. I call it Rotary Madness, okay? <laughs> and uh, a lot of what I do when I'm just hanging around at my piano is I just, I don't have to come up with a, a song. In fact, it's hard to come up with a song. So mostly I just doodle around and, um, you know, and I was I doodling around going, you know what I mean? And that's how it starts. Yeah. And, and, and I, uh, you know, I didn't have any grand idea, nothing. Uh, a lot of these songs just take place. They grow. They spontaneously grow from, from a little kernel. And uh, if I can remember it, and that was easy to remember because it's different than anything else I do. So go ahead and play that if you want to. It's um, it's it's nuts. But I threw it in the album because I thought my album was a little too, um, you know, a little too calming or something. And, and I threw it in there. But my mother didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here goes. She said, what did you do that for? I loved your album. Then that song came on. So. at the end <laughs> you know even though you weren't musically trained uh you have a really good musical ear and you know what you did here is you have a little bit of a motif and then you go into a, a second thing by the way at a different rhythm which is still very well matched in there and then you come back with answers and the same motif but reflected different ways and it's just a wonderful way that you wrap a lot of things around it you know there are people that study you know the famous composers and analyze what they do and deconstruct them and You've got a lot of rich stuff going on in your compositions, even though that was only a minute and 12 seconds. There was a lot going on there. And um, I guess um, I, you know, I always have so many things to ask you, but, um, you know, that that's a case where I, I think you, you I think you do have some idea of how to construct things. And maybe part of that's because you, you know, you're you told me your dad was very gifted. In fact, I remember you telling me that your dad and mom would get together at night and she'd sing and he'd play piano and you shared with me a CD of his where he played, I don't know, something like 30 different American songbook songs. So he clearly had a good ear. Was he was he trained on the piano or did he do it all by ear himself as well? No, he he, he just picked it up by ear. Yeah. Uh, he, he has a better ear than I do by far. He could, mm. he could listen to the radio and hear a song come on once or twice and go over to the piano and get maybe about 80% of it. Then he'd hear it again and get 90%. I mean, wow. I was blown away by that all the yeah. time. I, I never tried to do that. It's too much work. I, I He didn't find it work. He'd just go over and his his uh, memory could tell him what to do next. And he would get the chords, too. It was amazing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I saw that and I said, geez, I'm not going to do what he does. <laughs> so I, I went my own path trying to just come up with my own little pieces, which are fun. I love that. By the way, I also... Um... You just had a comment come in a minute ago asking if you ever did music to videos. And I know that you have a 
a friend, Mary Van Dusen. I don't know if she's on the line tonight, but if you type in Mary Van Dusen and Joe Blanchard, you will get these marvelous videos. Uh, sometimes they're two minutes, sometimes they're longer, and, and featuring uh, Joe's music. It's just wonderful. So I invite you to do that online, and you, you'll get not only the beautiful musical experience, but also this wonderful visual parallel. And so one of my favorites is Butterflies, which is uh, on, your, on your other album, The Butterfly Dance, and that you have all these images of butterflies in the process, and it just works perfectly. It's just great. Um, Andrew. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I just want to put in a plug for her. She's so gifted with the ability to take in images that she finds on the internet and she puts them together in such a way that you feel she's telling a story with random images that she finds. Mm -hmm. And then she found my music and she, she used to come into Newton Wellesley hospital uh, for visits to the doctor about once a month. And I played there for eight years. So she would sit and listen to me for a long time. She finally came up and we talked and she got, she has all my CDs and then lo and behold, uh, she starts putting, I mean, she'd been doing it before with other music for years, but she starts putting my songs to some of her little vignettes made out of these images. Mm. And then she told me to go on YouTube and look them up, which I did. And I'm blown away by them. I, I love them yeah. because I think they take some of my songs and make the song have some meaning due to her visual imagery that I, even I didn't have in the song. I just, but it really supports the, the imagery. And I find it a lot of fun to listen to what she does with my pieces. She's also good at knowing when to uh, switch to the next uh, photo, the, sw the next image. Mm. She does it on certain beats. She has her own way of doing it. It's very, right. in my mind, it's complicated, but yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's so natural and intuitive that I just love listening to. So Mary, if you happen to be out there, thank you for all you do. <laughs> really, thank you very much. You know, uh, I'm, I wanna play this piece because you've got some beautiful runs in here. And for someone that was never classically trained, I'm just blown away. In fact, I've had you play in some of my outside concerts this, this summer or this late fall. And, uh, you know, I've had professional musicians attending and they'd listen and they'd come back to me and say, that, that guy's got amazing technique. So you have the technique of a professional without the training. It's really quite, quite something to listen to. So this is a, some wonderful runs in Feelings Awakened, which is number 11. So I may have to skip ahead. Bear with me for a second as I jump, jump a few in advance here.
So um, I'm going to change the discs right now and go into the Moonlight, uh, more, sorry, Morning Light disc. Um, Joe, did you want to play any of the new song material you're working on or maybe ad lib a little bit or improvise? You, you, I could do that. Um, or you could save my playing a new song or two until the end. You're kind of on a roll with playing them from the CDs. I, I wouldn't like to interrupt right. that too much, but well, this is it's, my... uh, it's up to you, uh, Andrew, whatever you want me to do. This is one of my favorites. It's called Morning Light. And I think you told me you were just playing it. One of your sisters said, morning light. You said, yep, that's it. Is that? <laughs> yeah, same same sister, Janet, yep. happened to be visiting me. I was playing it. It was my new song, and I was very excited about it. Yeah. I said, Janet, stop and hear my, CD, my song. And so she comes in. She goes, oh, I love that, Joe. And I said, yeah, I need a name for it. She goes, morning light, just like that. I mean, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so, and it stuck. I loved it right from the get-go. And uh, everybody else likes the name of that song, too. So then we named the whole album after that song, and yeah. I made that song the first song in the, in the Morning Light album. And that was recorded in 2009. And, and uh, I came back in 2010, a few months later, it was at the end of the year. So like right about now, 2009, and I came back April 1st and recorded a few of the songs again, which had a, I think there was a mistake or two in that one, and it bothered me. So I recorded it again, and I got a perfect copy, luckily, the second time I recorded, and it was on April first, April Fool's Day, and I got a good copy. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I so, and anyway. yeah, you know, I I sometimes record with Doug Hammer, who's an amazing uh, musician and in his own right, but also a studio um, can, can, has his own studio and is kind enough to let me use it. And uh, you know, I have to take five takes on a piece and then cut and paste a bunch of things, and then I mess up. You have to do it in one take because you don't you don't I, you don't ever play it exactly the same way each time. So. That to me is an amazing. That story. is a problem. That's a huge problem. Perfectly <laughs> all the way through is an amazing and enviable skill. So I'm quite impressed. Um, I'm going to cut this a little short because we. I want to do about five more pieces before the hour's out, and we have about 15 minutes left. But what I love about this one too is that, in fact, I think I told you, Joe, I was talking to a, a ballet company down in Rhode Island about using this music because it, it, one of the things you do beautifully sometimes is you'll take a motif, and instead of repeating it twice in the classical way, you repeat it more than that. And it's almost a hypnotic thing. And I can see in this case, um, you know, uh, um, ballerinas pirouetting onto the stage with each of these repeated motifs. And then <laughs> at some point when the bass comes in and see the men come in. And I was talking to them about your music and unfortunately then COVID hit. But I definitely want to find a way to, to make some of this uh, work in the ball ballet world, choreograph some of it. So, but this is with no further ado, Morning Light. Enjoy, folks.
So that's about halfway through, because then you repeat some of it again and go into some other things. But just an absolutely beautiful song, Joe. Just I just love that piece. Um, and I apologize. Somehow my screen share broke out in the middle, and so it got soft for a minute. Um, boy, someone wrote a very long thing here. <laughs> Let me see if I can read what this says. Oh, this is my old friend Barbara Lubell from high school. Hi, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, um, you know, we're talking about being brought to tears in some music. This next piece is a perfect um, uh, perfect thing. I had something kind of traumatically sad happen to me a while back, and I just came across this piece of yours, and it just really brought a tear to my eye because it's such a sweet piece. And it's, you know, I love the fact that you don't even know how you're writing it because I, I actually transcribed this one. It's called Eternal Embrace, and it's written in the key of C-sharp minor. And you do some wonderful things in the chord progression. And uh, you, know, you do it so tastefully and so nicely, and, and it, it really has a very moving effect, at least on me. Um, and so I'm going to play the full part because it's two minutes, two minutes and 40 seconds. But it's kind of a waltz, but it's also a very sad one. And, and for the ballet, I was thinking this would be a wonderful thing to have um, a couple waltzing to this thing on stage. And then over time, they get older and older, and then you see them sitting down, kind of waiting, you know, happen, watching the younger ones dance, and then you see one of them is gone from the bench and then you know that that woman who, or the guy who's who is left is just alone and it just for me it just brought up a lot of a lot of things so uh i better i better play this before i break down andrew yeah. one thing um <laughs> can i say one thing about that piece you could say three things about it <laughs> <laughs> sort of little anecdotes sure. um that that pe people like that piece right away when i started playing because it's nice and slow and it's you know it makes them feel comfortable warm and comfortable mm -hmm. um so what happened is my best friend's son, uh, uh, he, he heard the piece and he says, geez, Joe, would you play that at my wedding so my wife and I can dance to it? I'll, we'll have our first dance to your song, Eternal Embrace. And the name of the song is Eternal Embrace. So it's very appropriate for a wedding, you know? Yeah. And so I did, I played it for real in, on a piano there while they were dancing. And, and I had an upbeat sense to it. I played it a little faster and with more intensity because they were, they were dancing along to it and it worked uh, and everybody was happy. So then another time, a few years later, one, one of my very good friends died uh, of uh, cancer. Oh, and, um, and it was so sad. I mean, he was beloved by hundreds of people. He owned a company that employed 30 people. It would, came very quickly. He died suddenly in a way. Oh, um, and his, he always loved that piece. And so his wife asked me to play it um, at, at their, uh, they they service. had a uh, what do you service. want to call it? Not a funeral, but um, what is service. it? A yeah, service, yeah. They have a service, yeah. And I came and played it there, and I played it much slower and sadder. So the song has two 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 sides to it. It can be uplifting and it can be sorrowful. Okay, I just wanted to say that. Well, Hillary, I'd like you to play this at my funeral, just so you know. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> here. We go. I gotta find it now. It's uh, let's see, what is it? It's oh, it's number five. Number five. Here we go.
So beautiful. So if anyone wants to learn how to play that, we do have the music transcribed for that. We'll have to figure out a way to get it to people. But I would love to see people out there playing your music, Joe. I just think it's such a gift. Thank you. Now, this is a piece I want to play this, even though you, you at first said no. I'm going to play a little bit of it because it's called Soaring. And it uses a very different musical concept where the right hand is playing kind of a little riff and the left hand is doing the melody. And it reminds me conceptually a little bit about something I just learned from Rachmaninoff. I'm going to play a very little bit of the Prelude 3212, uh, um, which has a right hand uh, a riff and then the left hand plays a melody. So I'm just going to play a little bit of it. Without further ado, I'm going to play Soaring. Now it's number eight, so I have to I have to bounce ahead a little bit. Anything you want to say before I play it? Well, it's it's long, so don't play too much of it. No, uh, it goes it, it goes on for six minutes, right? <laughs> Actually, seven <laughs> minutes and fifty seconds. But yeah. Oh, okay, that's no very worries. long. No worries. So why don't you just play the first uh, two minutes or so? You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stop it there even though it's yeah. just beautiful you know um one of the things i really love this is going to be a bear to transcribe because the, you interleave the fingering so well and so intricately that um and, and i know you don't even know what you're doing sometimes i remember one time i said well show me what you're doing there and you just you know you just do it instinctively and it's just so wonderful so um i, I have some great comments here people are just loving your playing you know one person said this song reminds me of of you know famous uh, people that played and it sounds like a classic. I'm thinking this should be on Sirius. In fact, I'd love to see your stuff. I don't think your stuff is on Sirius or or, or Spotify or any of those, is it, Joe? Uh, no, but I did. Uh, there's a thing called Taxi, which I was told uh, if you if you um, sign up for, which I did a few months ago, they would help find ways of putting your stuff on Spotify. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know. I just did that. And I was waiting for them to call me to send in some music. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. 
some of the people on the line are, are really good at that, so I'm going to talk to them, and maybe they can help you because I think your music deserves to be out there. The next piece I'm going to play, just briefly, because it's a very restful piece, but it also is one of those things that sounds like what it is, and this is called Falling Leaves, and what an appropriate thing for the fall. Do you have any quick uh, kind of discussion about it before I hit the go button on this one? Yes. This one, the way, the way I happened to compose this one was over a period of time. I just love the, the, little, refra the little refrain. There's a mm -hmm. phrase that I repeat over and over. I was doing that on the piano, and I just kept on coming back every day and doing that. And it finally expanded a little bit to make it three or four sections that I just um, glued together and tried to make it nice and the transmission uh, transitions very clean and smooth and uh, end up, it seemed like leaves just falling down. But everyone thinks that I mean autumn leaves. That's a real song out there. It's not, I have to correct people. It's, it's falling leaves, not autumn leaves. <laughs> right, okay. So that's, I'm glad you said that. So this is falling leaves and I will need to skip ahead a little bit because it's number 12. So bear with me for a second here. Oh, we're passing so many good songs, but we don't have enough time. just goes on it's so beautiful and what I love Joe is that you know you repeat the same phrase more than most musicians do but not to the annoyance of like you know like Philip Glass who may go on and on with the same thing but it's hypnotic and what's beautiful about it is that the more you hear that little riff or motif the more beauty you find in it and there's just more elegance in it and you don't play it exactly the same way every time you have a great touch which is very good and thank so you um, what I try to do is there's a, a call and a reply to it. The, the motif is the call, and then there's a little reply afterwards, all right? Yes. Do, you, do you hear that in there? Yes, definitely. And, yeah, so you do it about 10 times, and 
I try to make the reply slightly different every time, slightly. Just you yeah. have to really listen to hear it's that. It's really but. subtle, but it's effective. And you know, I have to confess that while you were, were you all listening, I went through and could see some of the people on their videos, and all of them were com contemplative and restful, and some were smiling, and some were just just. You can tell it was very, very um, restful and and uh, inspiring and spiritual. Um, the last piece I'm going to play, because I have to play this, and I think I told you this, and I had this one transcribed too because I love it so much. It's called Redwood Majesty. It goes on for five minutes. I'll play the first maybe two three minutes of it, um, mm -hmm. and then we'll get into a little more discussion, and maybe if you want to play some new things for us. But this is called Redwood Majesty. And did you want to say a few words before you do it? I'll get to tell you, it's very majestic. It, it was a perfect title. Whoever is the, Did Janet do that too? Because that was a great title. Uh, no, Janet did not do that one. Another one of my friends uh, did it uh, that used to um, come to um, uh, my piano sessions at Dana-Farber uh, in Boston uh, for a long time. Leslie Mandel, she uh, offered Redwood Majesty was a good idea for that song, and I loved it. So yeah. anyway, let me just say that. The other thing is, it is a long piece, so yeah. you'd, be, you'd be good to just knock it off after the first go around. I think it goes around three times, mm. each time a little different, but the first yeah. go around is good enough. Okay, here we go. Redwood Majesty. comes next da, 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 da. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wait for those tickly notes to come in because they're so beautiful so this wraps up the uh, the pre-recorded part of the show 
And uh, we have, you know, we, we're over a time limit, but I think we can, I think people are willing to hang in there. We've only lost one person in the last hour, so thank you all for hanging in. Would you like to play a few things, Joe? Just a, some, a new piece that maybe you've been working on. Well, I have a whole bunch of new pieces that I've been doing. I haven't been playing my old pieces. That's the problem. <laughs> Since March 10th. Yeah, I, I stopped playing at all hospitals uh, March 10th when they all closed down to volunteers, right? Yeah. And I haven't played any venue publicly since then. As you know, we both don't play at the cafe anymore. Right. Uh, they closed the BSO cafe down. Yep. So, you know, it's tough for musicians all over. I really feel bad for the professional musicians. Hmm. You know, I, I'm an electrician and I, I still do jobs and I make money. Yeah. But um, these poor professional musicians... There's nothing for them right now. It's it's awful. I, I just feel terrible for them. Um, Actually, but anyway, yeah. Uh, really busy. So some of them are finding ways to be busy somehow. But but yeah, and I'm impressed with the fact that you are a full time electrician too by day. So it's not like you just hang around a lot on the piano this whole time. So, um, <laughs> but tell us what you're thinking of playing now. Is, tell me some of the things you're working on. Well, I'm 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 playing a bunch of new little pieces that. You know what? I have to wait for a piece to finish itself. I can't make it finish. Right. Um, right. You you once talked to me about endings and things like that. It it's it's hard to just say okay, I'm gonna think of an ending right now. It it either comes um, intuitively and then you go oh that's a good ending and you try to repeat it. And if you can remember it and repeat it, now you've got a song. Many times I get a great idea for an ending. I play it one time. I knew it was good. And I cannot remember it for the life of me. Oh and God. so I can't do it again. I have to wait until it comes around someday. Yeah. And it may never come around. Wow. So I've got about five songs that I'm in the middle of right now trying to figure out, are they going to end themselves or what? Right. <laughs> and it's pretty, I just go on to the next one. I just don't, you can't force music. It just oh. doesn't work. Wow. So anyway, here's what I'm thinking. We are out of time. You said you want to do this again sometime. Oh, why, why don't we... Uh, we didn't touch any of uh, my um, Sandpiper CD at all. Yeah. I was wondering, how about we do Sandpipers and I play live songs next time? It, you know, it's up like to you. a month. I thought you might want to play one little piece for us. Is there any little? It's up to you. Uh, but I, yeah. Uh, okay. I don't really have a little piece, but I, <laughs> I have a piece that's maybe three minutes. Is you that play like even a partial piece just to, to see the idea that you're doing? I'd love to see. Something oh, OK. All right. Thing. All right. Here's, here's one then. Now, okay. this is a uh, kind of jarring. I've been playing nice. You've been playing some of my nice, uh, right. quiet music. This one's okay. jarring. So Good. you're going to wake <laughs> us all up. By the way, I just had someone give a comment. Thank you so much for this wonderful forum and bringing composers to us in our pajamas. So I think <laughs> we're going to wake you up now. Whoever you are, we're going to wake you up. <laughs> hey, do you remember composers in red sneakers? Did you ever hear that? No. Oh, that was a thing in Boston about 20 years ago. Composers in red sneakers. I never was part of it, but... Somebody already thought of the sneakers and the pajamas thing, I think. I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, Do you have a name for this yet, by the way? No, no, no name. I, I wait until the piece is done before I give it okay. names usually. That's fair. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Joe. That's, That's the first movement. Wonderful. Very nice. So let's open this up to the floor. If anyone has a question, uh, I'm going to ask people to unmute now. And uh, let's see how I do that. But you still have to, I can't force you to unmute. You have to unmute yourself. So let's see, how do I do that here? Maybe Hillary, you maybe know how to do that. <laughs> uh, well, unmute. Try to unmute yourself. See if people can unmute. So you just go to each little screen and you can say mute or unmute. But several people unmuted already, so 
I just can't ask. People know how to do it themselves. They just press on their microphone and then it will unmute. Mm -hmm. If they want to ask, or they can go to the chat box if they want to ask there. Yeah. If there's too many people that unmute, then you get some background noise too, right? Mm -hmm. So, any questions? Any comments? The audio sounds have been excellent. Oh, yeah. thank, you. thank you. Well, one of the things that I'm doing is I actually have a 100 foot Ethernet cable plugged into my computer right to the router. So we don't, we're not using Wi Fi to make sure you have a great connection because the last thing we want is to have things kind of, you know, um, fade out in the middle and, and, and glitch and that sort of thing. So I hope, hopefully, the fidelity has been good for all of you tonight. Well, Joe, we covered a lot of ground personally, and um, thank you for being such a great participant. I really appreciate your insights and it's a pleasure talking to you. I'm sure we'd love to have you back again. Uh, you know, at some point we might make this more than once a month, but for now, um, uh, I'm very excited that next month I have um, uh, a local uh, jazz uh, professional musician who teaches at Berkeley, Joe Mulholland, will be joining us. And, and he comes, of course, from a very different place, you know, playing some very elaborate um, jazz music. And I'm sure he's very deliberate in the way he designs it. And, and it's just as valid, of course, and amazing stuff. And I, I, he's got to take about five CDs out. So I'm looking forward to having him on. And there's other people listening in the audience that I hope will join me at some point in the future who are very gifted and talented in their own right. And uh, I want to thank you all for coming again. Uh, appreciate your time. I hope that we do this uh, for quite a while. I know currently the grant ends in June, but hopefully we get extended. We'd love to see this go on for as long as there's music in the world. So thank you all again. I'm going to sign yeah. off. And Joe, thanks again so much. Don't forget Joe, uh, Bl joeblanchard.com. And uh, please visit his site. And also, if you go to, if you just type Joe Blanchard Music, I'm sure you'll come up with little videos and other musical inventions out there that are just wonderfully done. So thanks again, all of you. I'd like to say thank you uh, to anybody who tuned in. Thank you for tuning in. My pleasure. I enjoy uh, doing something like this. This is the first time I've done this. Um, Andrew has done it with a few others. Uh, thank you for including me, Andrew. I am uh, very um, proud to uh, participate. And uh, thank you, Hillary, for everything you've done. And so um, uh, let's, if we, if you want to do it again, please call me and we can do some other songs and I'll play a little bit more too, if you want. And I hope that, uh, you know, when COVID's over, you come to the BSO Cafe and see us play. And Joe's a regular there. I'm a regular. And we have about 16 people that, that rotate through. And it's just a wonderful venue. Joe, you also played at the Red Lion Inn, right? Uh, so you yeah, I've been there for 20 years on and off. Uh, yeah. Every yeah. other Saturday, I played yeah. there, but they closed down too due to COVID. So I haven't played there since uh, March either. Right. It's too bad. It's a wonderful place. I love playing there. Oh my God. Um, but anyway, we so we'll hope to get over this. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your music with the world. Thank you all and good night. Appreciate it. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you.